gospel things and songs, hymn number 12. Praise him, praise him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carried them all the day long. O ye saints that dwell on the mountain of Zion, praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. For our sins, he suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus, the crucified. Loving Savior, meekly enduring sorrow, crowned with tongues that could feel his brow, once for us rejected, despised, and forsaken, Prince of glory, ever triumphant now. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reigned forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Where is now thy victory boasting grave? Jesus lives, no longer thy portals are cheerless. Jesus lives, the mighty and strong to save.
songbird singing their refrain, it is morning in my heart, and I know that life for me begins again, it is morning in my heart. Christ has made the world a paradise for me, it is morning in my heart. Every duty in the light of love I see, it is morning in my heart. Joy has come to dwell with me forever, it is morning in my heart. I shall sing it when I reach the other shore. It is morning in my heart. It is morning. It is morning in my heart. Jesus made the gloomy shadows all depart. Songs of gladness now I sing, for since Jesus is my king, it is morning, it is morning in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Mark 4. Mark 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some in hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some in hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the even was come, 
he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. One by one, an evangelism charge by our Father in the faith. Bring the one next to you, and I bring the one next to me. In no time at all, will win them all, so bring them, win them, one by one. Acts chapter 8, verse 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert understand Philip the evangelist was in a great revival in Samaria and the angel of the Lord said leave that place and go to the desert area and he arose and went and behold the man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. Look at how important the person was. At the charge of all the treasures of the queen. And had come to Jerusalem for to worship, and was returning, and sitting in his chariot to reach the Zayas the prophet. Then the Spirit of the Lord said unto, tell me, unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. That was the uh, instrument or the uh, method of movement at that time. There was no car. It was the country. They will say, enter the taxi. Enter the car. There's somebody there that needs to hear the gospel. Just one person or you go into the plane there's one person there reach out to that person or you're in the train reach out to that one person the spirit of god said go near join thyself to this chariot and philip ran see the to him look at verse 35 then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus so you see the ministry of reaching just one person. And the Lord is still looking for one person today that will be faithful. That as you contact people, as you see people, you will not say, it's not important. I'm waiting when I get to my house fellowship and those people gather and share with them. Reach out to that person that you find on the street. You find in the community just one. The phenomenon of a flight never ceases to amaze. And the spectacle is that much more when it's about to take off and go higher. And now, it's time to take you higher for a glorious flight of showers. We're taking our flight to Patakot. Attention, please. The Global Crusade Flight GCWFK 800 is now ready for boarding. All checked in partakers are advised to proceed for boarding with their prayer requests. Before we take off for Port Harcourt, hear this good news of a wonderful miracle of healing from COVID 19 during the Abuja Crusade when the man of God prayed. I almost died. I just thought it was malaria. 
I never knew it was COVID. Death took over me. I had to pray my last prayer. I was rushed to the isolation center because I was tested COVID. And there, many people had died. The first day I got there, three people died. And uh, in the midnight, another two people died. And I was say, I have said my last prayer because people are dying too much there. The GS heard about it, and then he took the phone, and then he phoned me. When he phoned, my wife took the phone, and he prayed for me. And when he prayed for me, immediately I got healed. Immediately after the GS prayer, I wanted to go to the toilet, and I told my wife, and my wife said they should bring the wheelchair that they usually use to take me to the toilet. And I told her, did you know who has just prayed for me now? She said, yes, I think that's the case. I'm not going to use the wheelchair anymore. The strength came, and I jumped up immediately, and I went to the toilet, came back, and all the people in the hall, they were very surprised because they have been carrying me to the toilet with the wheelchair since I arrived here. Now I am living, I am fine, no more COVID, and I'm rejoicing with my family. I have received my own miracle. Call for showers of blessings. Yes, the Global Crusade flight is about to take off again. Higher to showers of blessings through Christ. It's Port Hackett Live. Showers coming from heaven. The October edition of the ongoing Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. And listen to me, you hear it from the office mouth. Port Harcourt Global Crusade from the 27th, that's the Wednesday, until the 34th, that's a Sunday, five powerful days. The crusade will pack together all the miracles you ever desired in your life. For your spirit, for your soul, for your body, for your family, every member of your church, and for those who are at the point of almost passing on, power is coming. Showers of blessing coming. And it will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Power ministrations from Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui will be live from the Garden City straight to the world, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. The Lord will do wonders among you. For your exclusive priority flights, 5 p.m. daily, takeoff time. Go get your boarding pass now. Don't fly alone. Also bring on board family and friends, colleagues in the office, all those you know. Get your free boarding pass. It's available in all Deeper Life Bible churches worldwide. You can also get your boarding pass free online. Towers coming from heaven as the rain comes down, so your word will come, your wonders will come, your miracle will come, your salvation will come, every good thing will come in Jesus' name. Showers coming down.
just heard now in that clip is from Pastor Ajayi at his solo. His Pastor Ajayi is solo. Are you here today? I go Pastor Ajayi from the solo. Are you here? Come. You can come up here if you're there. Praise the Lord. Today we celebrate life. No death. I said no premature death. Life. God bless you. God bless you. Please get up. I want you to remove your something. I want you to testify directly. We've seen it. We'll see you on the screen. Now we'll see your life. God bless you. Take over. Praise the Lord. I give glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for me through our Father in the Lord who delivered me through his prayer from COVID-19. Praise the Lord. All along, it started from the middle of July. And I was thinking that it was malaria. So it has entered in. I went from one hospital to another. And uh, in the third hospital, they knew that it was COVID. And they tested me. And they, everything has gone into the lungs. And then my ear, everything, oxygen gone down. I couldn't walk anymore. I was carried on the way here into the vehicle and with oxygen so that I will not, I will not die on the way. And by the time we got to the isolation center and uh, they look at me, they said this is a serious case. And they placed me on full oxygen. And I was there right from uh, August 1st and uh, the first day about Three people of my age that were rushed there died within two hours. In the midnight, two people died again. So I was thinking I will all lose, I will also die. And uh, the information was passed to our Father in the Lord that your son is on oxygen and that he's about giving up. And actually, by the second day, which is Monday, it was terrible. Tuesday, it was, in fact, I prayed my last prayer on Tuesday morning. And I said, Lord, if there's anything that remains that I've not confessed to you, forgive me. Because the tense was so much. And then I actually was waiting to go to the other side, later by the evening. By 12.30 to 1, the phone rang. My wife picked the phone and he said, it's our father, is our GS. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And immediately, he asked, my, my wife explained everything to him. And he asked my wife to give me the phone. I received the phone. He prayed. Brethren. 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 Please. God has given us a pastor, a father, an apostle with general authority in heaven, also and on earth. Praise the Lord. He prayed. And he said, Everything that is blocking my throat should be cleared. He said, all symptoms, everything should go away. 
the strength that was not there because when I arrive there, I cannot, I cannot work anymore. If I want to go to the toilet, they will wheel me on the wheelchair. That money, they still wheel me on the wheelchair. After the prayer of our Father in the Lord, I asked my wife, I wanted to go to the toilet. He said the boy should bring the wheelchair. I asked her, do you know who has prayed for me now? She said, yes. I said, if you know, I am not going to ride on that wheelchair anymore. The strength has come. Hallelujah. The strength came. And I jumped up on my feet. And I walked straight to the toilet. And I came back. Praise the Lord. The appetite was not there anymore. He commanded the appetite to come back. The strength to come back. That very afternoon, my lunch was double. Because the appetite had come back. I started eating well. And everything was going on fine. And the people, you know, the doctors, they will not know what has happened to me. When they came, the second day, they said, this Baba, let's remove this full oxygen. They remove it. The third day, they look at it. They said, let's reduce it to 0.05. They remove it. On Friday, they remove everything. On Sunday, praise the Lord, they discharge me. The Lord has done it for me. And please, God has given us a gift in this church. Don't go anywhere anymore. Please, stay here. Listen to the word. Obey the word. And continue in holiness and righteousness. The devil cannot take you from his hand. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Now, I wanted to tell you this. That was on the phone. Today, face to face. The Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. He will put a song in your mouth. He is praising God. He is rejoicing. He is singing a new song. I transfer all the victory to you. Flight never ceases to amaze. And the spectacle is that much more when it's about to take off and go higher. And now it's time to take you higher for a glorious flight of showers. We're taking our flight to Patakot. Attention, please. The Global Crusade Flight GCWFK 800 is now ready for boarding. All checked in for takers are advised to proceed for boarding with their prayer requests. Before we take off for Port Harcourt, hear this good news of a wonderful miracle of healing from COVID-19 during the Abuja Crusade when the man of God prayed. I almost died. I just thought it was malaria. I never knew it was COVID. Death took over me. I had to pray my last prayer. I was rushed to the isolation center because I was tested COVID. And there, many people had died. The first day I got there, three people died. And uh, in the midnight, another two people died. And I was say, I have said my last prayer because people are dying too much there. The GS heard about it, and then he took the phone, and then he phoned me. When he phoned, my wife took the phone, and he prayed for me. And when he prayed for me, immediately I got healed. Immediately after the GS prayer, I wanted to go to the toilet. And I told my wife, and my wife said they should bring the wheelchair that they usually use to take me to the toilet. And I told her, did you know who has just prayed for me now? She said, yes, I think that's the case. I'm not going to use the wheelchair anymore. The strength came, and I jumped up immediately. And I went to the toilet, came back, and all the people in the hall, they were very surprised because uh, they have been carrying me to the toilet with the wheelchair since I arrived here. Now I am living, I am fine, no more COVID, and I'm rejoicing with my family. I have received my own miracle. Call. 
for showers of blessings. Yes, the Global Crusade flight is about to take off again. Higher to showers of blessings through Christ. It's Port Harcourt Live. Showers coming from heaven. The October edition of the ongoing Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. And listen to me, you hear it from the office mouth. Port Harcourt Global Crusade from the 27th, that's a Wednesday, until the 31st, that's a Sunday, five powerful days. The crusade will pack together all the miracles you ever desired in your life. For your spirit, for your soul, for your body, for your family, every member of your church, and for those who are at the point of almost passing on, power is coming showers of blessing coming and it will come upon everyone in jesus name power ministrations from pastor dr wf kumui will be live from the garden city straight to the world their satellite and all our social media platforms the lord will do wonders among you for your exclusive priority flights, 5 p.m. daily, takeoff time. Go get your boarding pass now. Don't fly alone. Also bring on board family and friends, colleagues in the office, all those you know. Get your free boarding pass. It's available in all Deep Life Bible churches worldwide. You can also get your boarding pass free online. Showers coming from heaven as the rain comes down, so your word will come, your wonders will come, your miracle will come, your salvation will come, every good thing will come in Jesus' name. Showers coming down. Today we celebrate life. No death. I said no premature death. Life, come. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you. Please get up. I want you to remove your something. I want you to testify directly. We've seen it. We'll see you on the screen. Now we'll see you live. God bless you. Take over. Praise the Lord. I give glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for me through our Father in the Lord who delivered me through his prayer from COVID-19. Praise the Lord. All along, it started from the middle of July. And I was thinking that it was malaria. So it has entered in. I went from one hospital to another. And uh, in the third hospital, they knew that it was COVID. And they tested me. And they, everything has gone into the lungs. And then my ear, everything, oxygen, gone down. I couldn't walk anymore. I was carried on the way here into the vehicle and with oxygen so that I will not, I will not die on the way. And by the time we got to the isolation center and uh, they look at me, they said this is a serious case. And they placed me on full oxygen. And I was there right from uh, August 1st and uh, the first day about Three people of my age that were rushed there died within two hours. In the midnight, two people died again. So I was thinking I will all lose, I will also die. And uh, the information was passed to our Father in the Lord that your son is on oxygen and that he's about giving up. And actually, by the second day, which is Monday, it was terrible. Tuesday, it was, in fact, I prayed my last prayer on Tuesday morning. And I said, Lord, if there's anything that remains that I have not confessed to you, forgive me. Because the tense was so much. And then 
I actually was waiting to go to the other side later by the evening. By 12.30 to 1, the phone rang. My wife picked the phone and he said, it's our father, is our GS. Praise the Lord! And immediately, he asked my, my wife explained everything to him, and he asked my wife to give me the phone. I received the phone. He prayed. Brethren. 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 Please. God has given us a pastor, a father, an apostle with general authority in heaven, also and on earth. Praise the Lord. He prayed and he said, everything that is blocking my throat should be cleared. He said, all symptoms, everything should go away. The strength that was not there, because when I arrived there, I cannot, I cannot walk anymore. If I want to go to the toilet, they will wheel me on the wheelchair. That money, they still wheel me on the wheelchair. After the prayer of our Father in the Lord, I asked my wife. I wanted to go to the toilet. He said the boy should bring the wheelchair. I asked her, do you know who has prayed for me now? She said, yes. I said, if you know, I am not going to ride on that wheelchair anymore. The strength at all. Hallelujah! The strength came, and I jumped up on my feet, and I walked straight to the toilet, and I came back. Praise the Lord! The appetite was not there anymore. He commanded the appetite to come back, the strength to come back. That very afternoon, my lunch was double, because the appetite has come back. I started eating well, and everything was going all fine. And the people, you know, the doctors, they will not know what has happened to me. When they came, the second day, they said, ah, this Baba, let's remove this full oxygen. They remove it. The third day, they look at it. They said, let's reduce it to 0 0.05. They remove it. On Friday, they remove everything. On Sunday, praise the Lord, they discharge me. The Lord has done it for me. And please, God has given us a gift in this church. Don't go anywhere anymore. Please, stay here. Listen to the word. Obey the word. And continue in holiness and righteousness. The devil cannot take you from his hand. Say, the Lord! Praise the Lord. Now, I wanted to tell you this. That was on the phone. Today, face to face. The Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. He will put a song in your mouth. He is praising God. He is rejoicing. He is singing a new song. I transfer all the victory to you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your power. We thank you for the preservation of life. And we thank you that you are good to everyone. And your goodness will affect and will come and influence and impact every life today in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears of your people away. Those who are sorrowful, make them glad. And those who are mourning, cheer them up. Let the song of praise be in every mouth in Jesus' name. Sunshine, glory, praises, rejoicing in every heart even from today in Jesus' name. Even when people seem they are 
God to their last day, praying their last prayer, and thinking the end has come, a new beginning will start in your life in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now, today we are praising the Lord and we are purposefully praising God and we need to be doing that every day till the end of our lives. Today, the Lord will start you on a new road, on a new journey, with a new attitude and with the songs of praise in your mouth in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 145, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name, how long? Forever and ever. Look at verse 2. It says, every day, every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. In Psalm 34, reading from verse 1, Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times, at all times, I will bless the Lord, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then in verse 2, it says, My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3 tells us, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 119, verse 33. 119, verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Unto the end. I shall keep it. Am I praying unto the end? Am I praising the Lord unto the end? Am I serving the Lord unto the end? Am I, am I giving myself to the service of the Lord until the end? I will keep it unto the end. Verse 112. In verse 112, I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Perform the statutes of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord, even unto the end. Today, as we're talking about praising God, we're talking on the subject purposefully praising God every day till the end. There are three points we're looking at. Number one, the heart of appropriate, unblemished praises with godliness. We're praising the Lord from the heart. We're praising the Lord from the depth of our inward, innermost soul. Praising the Lord with appropriate, unblemished praises with godliness all from the heart. Number two, the history of acceptable and unacceptable praises to God. There's the history of praising the Lord. There are people who have praised the Lord before, acceptable. Other people praise unacceptable. And we look at the history and then we're able to draw a conclusion how we should be praising the Lord. Number three, the height of ascending or ceasing praises for God's glory. All we do, we're singing for God's glory. We're praising for God's glory. We're giving thanks for God's glory. We're rejoicing for God's glory in the church, at home, in the marketplace, anywhere. Everything we do, including praising the Lord, is all for God's glory. Let's look at number one. Number one is uh, the heart of appropriate, unblemished praises with godliness. Uh, let's look at Isaiah chapter 25, we're reading from verse 1. Isaiah 25, verse 1, O oh Lord, thou art my God. That's the same soul. That's not a drunkard. That's not a smoker. That's not a person that is still living in sin. 
that's not a goat in the sight of the Lord. It's a person who has surrendered his life. He says, my God, it's a person who has repented and turned around and he gave himself to the Lord. And therefore he can say, my God. A drunkard cannot say, my God. An unsafe person cannot say, my God in a real gospel way in a gracious way a person is still living uh, and serving the devil cannot say my god before our praises will be acceptable in the sight of the lord you must have repented you must have separated from sin and from the world and from evil and then you know that you're in the family of god and you can say i'm born again i'm saved i'm transformed i'm a child of god and god is my heavenly father he says oh lord thou art my god i will extol thee i will praise thy name for thou hast done wonderful things salvation wonderful healing wonderful freedom from sin wonderful the liberty to serve the lord without hypocrisy in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life that's the wonderful thing he has done he has redeemed us he has saved us he has sanctified us he has made us holy he has made us new creatures in christ he has healed us he has delivered us he has reached our name in the book of life in heaven he has done wonderful things that counsels our old are faithfulness and truth it tells us in psalm 138 verses 1 and 2 psalm 138 verse 1 i will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will i sing praise unto thee and then in verse 2 it tells us i will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 the lord will perfect that which concerneth me me say it now the lord will perfect that which concerneth me that thing you are concerned about the lord will perfect it in your life today thy mercy O lord endure it forever forsake not the works of thine own hands it will not forsake you in the time of trouble time of trial and in the time of sickness and time of any pressure upon your life it will not forsake you when you are poor when you need money when you need things that will bless your life the lord will not forsake you when your father and your mother when your friends and your acquaintances when they don't remember you and when they forget you the lord will always remember you in the day and in the night it will answer your prayer there are three things we're looking at number one our praise for the provision of the unsearchable god we're praising him because it's the unfathomable god unsearchable god and he has made abundant provision for us number two the power and perfection of the unchangeable god it's not changing his love has not changed his power has not changed and his goodness has not changed even today you'll find the fullness of the goodness of god in your life in jesus name number three the peculiarity of people praising with unreprovable godliness let's look at number one there number one there our praise for the provision of the unsearchable god look at psalm 145 verse 3 psalm 145 verse 3 great is the lord your god is great i said our god is great 
and you'll find him great he's never lost his power great is the lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable his greatness is unsearchable look at verse 9 in verse 9 it tells us the lord is good to how many people the lord is good i said to how many people who is going to explain the, the goodness of God here today? Where is he? Where is she? He'll be good to you in Jesus' name. And as he went out, the Lord Jesus went out doing good and he heal, healing all, everyone, everyone. He wants to save all. He wants to deliver all. He wants to bless all. He wants to put the joy and happiness of service in the heart of everyone. You will not be an exception. Your wife will not be an exception. Your husband will not be an exception. And the whole family, you'll not be an exception in Jesus' name. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. You will have your own share. Look at Psalm 68, verse 19. In Psalm 68, we're looking at verse 19. It says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. Who daily loadeth us. With what? I said with what? With benefit. It will load you today with blessing. With benefits. And, and you heard, we're taking our flight to Port Harcourt for showers of blessings through Christ. And as you attend that crusade in various groups and various locations everywhere, and you connect and you tell other people loads of blessing, showers of blessing. We're looking forward to it, and you will not miss your own in Jesus' name. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation wants to set up that area of salvation. You turn away from your sin, you repent, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary. You say, Lord, I leave all my sins, I leave all the works of Satan, I leave all the works of darkness, and I move away from all those dirty things of the world, and I look at Christ who died for me, Lord, I believe that you lived a perfect life, you died for me, you were buried on the third day, you rose again just for me. I accept the salvation. Salvation is yours. I said salvation is yours. And then from that point on, everything you need, ask, seek, and knock, and the Lord will load you with blessings in Jesus' name. Point number two there, in number two is the power and perfection of the unchangeable God. The power and the perfection of the unchangeable God. In Psalm 147, I'm reading from verse 3, He healed the broken in heart. He healed, he healed before, he will heal in the future, and today he's still healing. And if you are sick there, any part of your life, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, is healing you today. You will not carry sickness away from the presence of God in Jesus' name. And bind us up their wounds. If you have been wounded, if you have been crushed, the Lord will bind up your wounds in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, great is our Lord, and of great power is understanding is infinite. It says it's unsearchable in Psalm 145, and now it says in Psalm 147, it is infinite. You cannot get to the end of it, and that infinite power that immeasurable power, that unsearchable power, so great and so high and so broad and so deep, will work in every life in Jesus' name. 
Look at Psalm 148. I'm reading from verse 1. In Psalm 148, verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highs. Verse 2 tells us, it says, praise ye him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Have you noticed that? Praise him, all his angels. God created myriads of angels, innumerable number of angels. Then the head called Lucifer went away from the Lord. He wanted to compete with the Almighty God and he drew one thought of the angels after him. Those people, those angels, they cannot praise God in rebellion. They cannot praise God in disobedience. They cannot praise God in their satanic nature. They cannot praise God. Now, the psalmist is talking to the holy angels that remain and the obedient angels that remain, the loyal, faithful angels that remain. Satan, he cannot praise God. And the thought of the angels that followed him cannot praise God. The same thing with us. If we are submissive unto him, if we are sanctified, if we are children of God, if we are living holy, if we are totally surrendered in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit unto him, we'll be like those holy angels and we can praise the Lord. But... If we follow after Lucifer, as those evil angels followed after Lucifer, and then they're doing the they're doing the work of Satan, they could not praise God if we're following after Satan, if we're following after darkness, if we're following after evil, if we're sinful in our soul, in our tongue, with our action. The sinners, like those falling angels, cannot praise God. But if we remain committed unto the Lord, praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us there, it says, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Anything that comes near your life or into your life, it will bring the praise of God. The fire will bring the praise of God. The hail will bring the praise of the snow will bring the praise of God. The vapor will bring the praise of God. The stormy wind. Look at that. Let us go to the other side. They are coming to the other side. And then Jesus got into the boat, and then uh, the disciples also got there into the boat, and they were rowing. They were looking at the shore. They were looking at the destination to the other side. And then uh, stormy wind arose, bringing water into the ship. And then they woke him up, Master, Master, carest not thou that were perish. And then he rose up, it will rise up for you. And then peace, the steel, everything came to a calm. That fire in your family, everything will be quenched. And that hill falling down, everything will stop right there. And the stormy wind in your life, everything will come to an end. You will praise the Lord. And then everything came to a calm. And they were amazed, they were surprised. What manner of man is this? That even the stormy wind obey him. Every storm in your life will obey the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Fulfilling his word. Fulfilling his word. The word of God in your life will be fulfilled every time, no matter what is happening in Jesus' name. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 62. We're looking at verse 11. Psalm 62. We're looking at verse 11. God has spoken once. He has spoken to my life. I say, God has spoken to my life. Say it for yourself. God has spoken once, twice.